Hello folks and welcome to GED Microlearning. This is a GED channel, excuse me, a YouTube channel specialized in the GED math test. And as always, we're going to be doing uh, different formats uh, of, the G of the questions that you can expect in the GED test. Okay, so the question, the first question is a uh, fill in the blank and it says Dan bought a used car with 15,232 miles on it. If the car now has 38,027 miles, on it, how many miles did he put on the car? And write your answer rounded to the nearest thousand. All right, so what you wanna do is, first of all, we need to find out the total miles he put on the car. So we would just subtract that current amount of miles minus the original amount that gives us 22,795. Step two would then be to round to the nearest thousand. So let's quickly recap um, the place values, okay? so. So for place values, um, remember that the first number to the left of a comma is your thousand number. Okay, so in this case, our, th uh, our thousand number is a two, so we would round down to 20,000. Okay, so that would be the correct answer. Solve the expression. Okay, so here what we have to do is first of all, remind ourselves a little bit of how we multiply when you have an expression like that, how we multiply the exponents. So whenever you have a set of exponents where the base, okay, so in this case x is the same, all you have to do to the exponents is just add them across. Okay, so in this example, uh, it would be very easy. We would just say 3 plus 5 is equal to 8. Okay, so you add the exponents. All right, so that's the first thing you're going to do. You're going to add 2 plus 5 plus 3. And that gives you 10. So your exponent is going to be y raised to the 10. And then step two would be to multiply the coefficients. Okay, so the coefficient is the number in front of the variable. So 3 times 10 times 2. Um, and sorry, I've put 3 plus 10 plus 2. That's a mistake. It should be 3 times 10 times 2. Okay, and that gives you 60. All right, so the correct answer would be C. All right, so the next question is one of these uh, drop-down menus. So, um, so it gives you, the, it asks you to find the ordered pair for point A on the graph, and it gives you uh, basically uh, these drop-down menus where you're going to put the x coordinate and the y coordinate. Okay, so the first thing is let's find out the x coordinate. So if we find point A and then kind of follow that down to the x, you can see that the coordinate for x is 2. And then if we do the same thing for y, you can see that the coordinate is going to be 5. Okay, so those are your coordinates. So the ordered pair will be 2 and 5 for the y. All right, so this next question is one of these drag and drop questions where they give you the question at the top and at the bottom they give you the answer options. Um, that you just basically have to click one of these boxes at the bottom and drag them and drop them in the correct spot. Okay, so it looks a little bit like this. You would click whatever you want to move. It usually um, becomes blue so that you know it's activated. And then you can move uh, stuff around. If you make a mistake, just move it back. All right, so that's the drag and drop. All right, so if we go ahead and simplify the expression, okay, and multiply everything out, we would end up like this. And what you want to do now is add like terms, okay, meaning all the x's together, so 3x minus x plus 10x, okay, if we combine those like terms, we end up with 12x. And then we're going to do the same uh, for those uh, numbers that have the x, y, okay, that gives us minus 11xy, and then for the whole numbers. All right, so then our expression would look like this. Question five is a geometry question that looks at combined figures. Okay, so sometimes you get these weird figures that they give you and uh, what you have to realize is that it is more than one figure um, in the whole image. Okay, so in this case we have a triangle in the top, then we have a rectangle, and at the bottom we have a, a trapezoid or trapezoid, however you pronounce it. Okay, so it's asking us to find the area of the figure. So what you want to do is step one, find the area of the triangle. So let's just look at that bit. 
So that's a formula for the area of a triangle. This is provided for you in the GED, in your uh, cheat sheet that they give you, formula sheet. So all you have to do is plug in the numbers. So the base is 6, the height is 7, that gives you 21. The next image that we have at the bottom in the middle is the rectangle. And that's how you find the area of the rectangle. So length multiplied by width. So you put those numbers in, that gives you 12. And finally, the bottom image is a trapezoid or a trapezoid. Um, trapezoid, I think you pronounce. Okay, so that's how you would, um, that's the formula. So you have uh, base one, which would be six, and base two, which would be 10, multiplied by the height, multiplied that times one half. And that gives you 32. So all you have to do now is add these three areas that you just found out. So 21 plus 12 plus 32, and that gives you 65. Question six, Brendan owns a bakery. One of his suppliers offers discounts on orders of 10 or more of the same item. He orders 15 boxes of cupcakes, 10 boxes of donuts. Use the table below to determine how much the order will cost after discounts are applied. Uh, round it to the nearest hundredth. All right, so first of all, let's calculate uh, the price of stuff. So uh, for cupcakes, He's going to buy 15 boxes, so we would multiply the price times the number of boxes. And then we have to apply the discount, so we would um, multiply that number by 0 0.05. That gives us $3.375. Uh, um, so we're going to subtract that number from the original value, and that gives us the discounted price on cupcakes. All right, we're gonna do the same thing with the donuts. So 10 boxes times $7 gives us that. We apply the discount, which is 11% in this case. That gives us uh, $62.30. And then basically the total is gonna be these two added together. And it asks us in the question to round to the nearest hundredth, okay, which is that value that you see there. Okay, so we would round up because it's 42.5. So we would round up to 43. So this next problem is a combination problem. So sometimes they ask you combinations or permutations. So combinations is when they ask you to make, you know, combined things and the order doesn't matter. And sometimes for combinations, the best thing to do is a table. All right, so the question says, Joe is shopping for a treat at a store that sells ice cream, cookies, pie, and donuts. He wants to get two treats. How many combinations of treats can he get? So this is a little bit of a pain, but I find it to be the, the easiest in, in, at the end of the day, which is to do like a table like this and make just combinations like manually. So he could have ice cream and cookies, ice cream and pie, or ice cream and donuts. That's three combinations, or then he can have these other three combinations. Okay, so if you count that out, that ends up being six possible combinations of treats that he can get. So it would be option B. Rick has a taco truck. He sells beef tacos for $1.25 each and veggie tacos for 50 cents. At the end of the day, he made $82.50 and sold a total of 87 tacos. How many veggie tacos did he sell? Okay, so this is one of these uh, system of equation problems, um, which I, I've noticed that a lot of you don't like, so that's why I've put it in. So um, so this involves you doing writing two equations and then substituting one of those equations into another equation. So let me explain. So first of all, let's kind of um, determine our variables, right? So we're gonna say that the veggie tacos are called X and the veggie tacos are Y. So if we do an equation of the total number of items sold, we would say beef tacos plus veggie tacos is equal to um, total number. So in this case, we would say X plus Y is equal to 87. Okay, so that's the equation of items sold. And then we would add the cost, okay? So we would say we know that each beef taco, so each X is $1.25. And then we know that the veggie tacos are 50 cents. And altogether, he sold $82.50. Okay, so you would write your equation for the cost of the items, as you can see there in the bottom.
Okay, so the price multiplied by x, which is the number of, of items sold. Okay, so what we're going to do is, um, since we want to find out uh, y, which is the veggie tacos, we write our equation like that. We're going to rewrite it like this. And now we're going to take our second equation, and we're going to plug uh, the equation that we just figured out, the y, into this new equation, like that. And then we're going to solve for this, so multiply everything out. Okay, divide uh, both sides by 0.75, and that gives you 52. Okay, so if you remember, we said that um, the, the beef tacos were X, and we just figured out X, which is 52. So now we have to figure out how many veggie tacos he sold. So we would take this equation, which we had at the top, just plug in the 52 that we figured out, and that gives us Y is equal to 35. Okay, 35 veggie tacos. Okay, so this is a system of equations problem, and we're using the method of substitution. All right, and this kind of always tricks people a little bit. Okay, option A. So the next question is a fill in the blank, um, and it asks us to simplify the expression and write the answer in the box below. So what you can do here, you can use two methods to multiply uh, this out. The first one is uh, the FOIL method, and the second one is the BOX method. Okay, I'll show you both. So the FOIL method basically stands for the, the order in which you carry out procedures when you uh, multiply um, expressions like this. Okay, so the F stands for first, the O for outer, I for inner, and L for last. Okay, so I'll leave that cheat sheet there. So if we uh, multiply like that, you can see that uh, for the first values, so that's 5x multiplied by 3x, that would give us 15x squared. Then if you multiply um, for, excuse me, outer, which would be the 5x multiplied by 6, that gives you 30. And then the inner, which is 4 multiplied by 3x, that's 12x. And then the last is uh, 6 multiplied by 4, which is 24. That's what it gives you. Simplify, and you end up with that expression. The second way to do this is the box method. Okay, And if you've done uh, GED science and you remember the Punnett squares in genetics, then this is going to be really easy because basically you set up a Punnett square like this. Okay, so you're going to set up the different parts of your equation along the side or the top part of the box. And you can put them, um, you know, in any order that you want. I mean, you can put the whichever expression in the top and whichever expression on the side, doesn't matter. And what you're going to do is you're going to multiply terms out. So in this case, we would multiply 3x times 5x. That gives us 15x squared. And do the same with this bottom number positive 4. Okay, make sure you capture the sign because otherwise you're going to screw it up. Okay, so in this case, that's 12x. We're going to repeat the same thing uh, with the 6. Okay, so 6 multiplied by 5x is 30x, and 6 multiplied by positive 4 is 24. Okay, so notice that we have the same set of numbers. So if you just simplify uh, these four numbers, you end up with the same thing. Okay, 5, 15x squared plus 42x plus 24. All right, which is the correct um, answer. The cheapest, uh, excuse me, sorry, the cheapest ice cream cone with the greatest volume is which one? So this is one of these drop down questions where you have one of these drop down menus um, and it's, it's a geometry question. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to look at the cheapest ice cream cone. Okay, so it's either going to be option A or B because those are the two cheapest cheapest options. Okay, so let's go ahead and figure out the volume for cone A. So you would take the radius, which is um, half of the diameter, multiply it by the height, like this, and that ends up giving you 65.4 inches cubed. And which is pretty big. <laughs> okay, you do the same thing for uh, cone B. And in this case, it gives you 84.78 inches cubed. Okay, so it's a massive cone of ice cream 
for $4.80. All right, so the correct answer would be B. Okay, folks, so that's it for today. Thank you so much for your time. If you found it useful, please consider subscribing. And as always, have a terrific rest of your day.